what up divas and divos so <clears throat> what's up divas and divos so it's real talk wednesday you guys and you know i'm back just got my package delivered by amazon you know what i'm gonna just say this because i know y'all guys have heard me say this enough times but i really do love amazon like i just ordered this stuff yesterday um and it was literally yesterday monday and it was in the afternoon and it came today okay on tuesday so but i will say one thing about them they will put one little tiny thing in this huge big box with all this bubble wrap like we are destroying trees amazon like y'all could have just put this in a little envelope and just delivered it they put all of this in this one huge box so this is like a waste of cardboard and i've got enough cardboard already and you see what I'm saying? And all of this extra, this extra stuff. But anyway, you guys, um, I'm back. It's Real Talk Wednesday. I'm only going to do one because the one that I'm going to do today, the Real Talk that I'm going to do today is pretty long. So I figured I would just do one. So I hope you guys are in store for that. I hope you guys had like an amazing, excuse me, because I really wanted to check out some items. I hope you guys had like an amazing week okay because listen it's about to be valentine's so i know you guys are like you know getting ready for valentine's every day should be valentine's day because we you know just because you love yourself you know what i'm saying like love yourself even if it is on valentine's day if you ain't got no you know spouse girlfriend boyfriend just love yourself buy yourself some chocolates you know what i'm saying so today's drink of the day is actually by Dutch Bros. Okay, I have never had any of their coffee before. My kids keep telling me like all these good things about Dutch Bros. So today I took my son to the dentist on the way back home. We stopped off at Dutch Bros. He got a unicorn blood, which tastes really good. And I got this caramelized, which is kind of like caramel, caramel and mocha together. And it's iced coffee. And this is really good. But the service at Dutch Bros is even better. Like, I have read so many good things about, like, their mannerism, their customer service, how pleasant they are. And you know something? They were so friendly. So I will say that I do like this iced coffee. And I got the biggest size, as you guys can see, because I want this to last me for, you know, a couple of hours. Um, the prices are decent. I will compare them to Starbucks prices but a lot more friendlier. You know, it's kind of like a drive through coffee spot. You can also get out the car and stand by the window and order. And that's what I did because, listen, I don't really know too much about all these different flavors and everything they had to offer. But this is really good. So if you guys have a Dutch Bros near you and you try them out, let me know what you think of them. What's your favorite, you know, drink? So I can try it out because now I'm addicted. I got a car with nine stamps on it. She gave me nine stamps on my first visit. So I'm really like liking them. So the 10th stamp that I get, my next drink will be free. So yes, Dutch Bros, okay? Um, also, other than that, I mean, like, I really haven't been doing anything lately. I do have, like, some new videos. I'm so excited because I'm going to edit this video tonight, which is how to sleek your kinky straight wigs. That way you can have them in like a super thin, sleek ponytail. And I also show the details on how to do that and install the unit. And I'm really excited about that because I thought it came out so cute, especially from the pictures. Like, it looks really good. Um, and I did some try on haul videos this past weekend um, during Martin Luther King weekend. Um, let me tell you guys, I did three try on hauls. One was for Rose Gal, like always. Then one was for Rose Wee, I think they're called. And the third one, I cannot remember. So I did these try on hauls all in one day. And I try to make it my business to try on everything, like every single garment. But it was like, okay, so I had my hair on, you know, I had my kinky straight wig on and I had it up in a bun. And I feel like out of, I'm going to say like, I'm going to say like out of 10 pieces, we're just going to use 10 as a number example number out of 10 items eight of them is eight of them i had to put over my head 
okay? And I was so irritated from that, putting them over my head. Then it started getting hot to me. I started sweating. Then my wig started lifting up. I had to stop and go back. It was like, just like, just too much. Um, some of the items I was just not too happy with. I would say like, probably like 75% or 50% of the items I was not too happy with. Um, some of them did not fit properly. I was just getting like overheated, you know. I don't have all those hormones. The patch that I have to wear doesn't seem like it wants to stay on because, you know, you do have to wash. You have to change it twice a week. So I don't know if it was my hormones that was making me really hot, you know, or it was just the fact that I had to just keep on trying on all these different clothing. So I was really like irritated with that. I didn't even get to finish the video with me sitting down and just speaking about it because I was just kind of like all over the place. And at that moment of time, I just wanted to be done with it. So that's what I did this past weekend. Um, and I also made a couple more units for the website, you know, my website, going with the wind wigs .com. And these are just, um, brand new units, um, um, for my website. So you will not see me uh, modeling them. You'll only basically see me modeling the video units. Um, but the brand new units will not see me modeling. I do have actual mannequins that are the same head circumference and body size with them right here as a natural human being. So I have them modeling those now. So yes, I did make those this past weekend and that's about it. You know what I'm saying? I did a couple of units and that's it. And that's what I'm going to do today. But you guys, so other than that, um, oh, and I bought me some incense. I love incense. I bought some of these from the smoke shop because I was going in there for this. Okay, I was going in there for this. And then he had these and I love incense. These are actually my favorites right here. These ones are, okay, so if you guys love incense and you love anything that smells really good, then I used to buy these from eBay. Um, You probably could find them on Amazon. I was so shocked that he had them at his, at the smoke shop. They were $2. Um, I can't really remember how many come in here, but you do get like a nice amount in the box, okay? So I used to get the same scent, same brand from eBay before Amazon was even popping. And I actually really do love these incense these are like the ones from india these are like the real real incense and um this scent is amazing there are two scents that i used to get and it's this one and this one here so if you guys love incense and you want to try something that's like really from india and stuff then you have to try these um i will try to remember to post it below for you guys i'm gonna just zoom in in case you really want to see what it looks like and the other one doesn't really have a name, but I call it Sataya because there really isn't a name for the next one. Um, oh, it's called by Super Hit. So hold on, you guys. So, and this is the next one. So I'm going to just put them so you guys can see if you do like incense a lot, then you'll definitely have to try these two. There are other ones, um, other scents too by this brand. But I have not tried them. But these are the ones that I, you know, have purchased many, many times. And I absolutely love these. These are, like, some really, really good incense. Um, one of my favorites. I don't really buy incense from, like, anywhere. Um, I like to buy, like, certain kinds. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do get these here. These are the Blunt Lights. And these are good, too. These are five. You get these for a dollar. So these are not bad. Um, you get a nice amount for a dollar. And they do smell good. And, you know, some more of the um, Indian ones. This is the first for me with this one. So, you know. But other than that, you guys, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that, oh, you know what? Let me just post you update. So me and my daughter, we are speaking. Um, once again, we are speaking. And we are, we are becoming, like, not becoming, excuse me. We are speaking to one another. And we're on a very friendly, you know, note. When I say we're on like a friendly note, like we are, we speak, we are speaking, we're conversating with one another. Um, you know, we're just back to like regular. Like I don't, this is like me, guys. I never would want to make anyone feel like lesser than what, I just would never want to make anyone feel lesser. And I would never want to hurt anyone's feelings. And I don't like to make anyone feel bad or hurt anyone's feelings. So it did bother me a lot, you know, after the conversation that I had with her. It just bothers me a lot because I never want to make anyone feel, you know, like bad inside. That's like a huge pet peeve of mine. Like, 
I just don't like to hurt people's feelings in general. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that we are speaking to one another. And I just want the best for all my children. You know what I'm saying? Like anyone in general, I would want the best for anyone in general. I would never want to wish like ill on anyone. So it's really important to me to like have that bond and be able to talk with them and allow them to understand like where I'm coming from. You know what I'm saying? When I'm telling them certain things and me, even me and my son Walter, we had a conversation this weekend um, because, you know, I had kind of got into it with him because he had just did something minor, but I kind of like exploded. And, you know, I did have to come back and say, you know, listen, this is the reason why I was like this. And I apologize if I hurt your feelings. And, you know, we had like a good conversation and I just want them to know, like, you know, when I tell you something, it's always for the best of you, you know, better yourself, be better than what I am. Always be better than what I am because that's what we want for all our children to be better than what we are. So, you know, it bothers me when, you know, I tell them something for their own, you know, well being and they take it the wrong way. But that's just life in general with a lot of people. You know, you tell someone something for their own good and sometimes you have to be very blunt about it. You know what I'm saying? You have to just be really, really like stern when you're telling them something for their own good sometimes because you told them this plenty, plenty times before, but it just seems like it didn't sink in. So probably like maybe by the third, fourth, fifth time of you telling them the same thing, you know, at that moment, you're super blunt with it. You're very stern and you may come off as being a little harsh, but you know what I'm saying? That person that you're telling this to, they take it the wrong way. And it kind of like, you know, they're getting their feelings about it. They're not more or less focusing on what you were trying to instill in them, but they're focusing on how you made them feel. So it bothers me when you can, when I can sit and have like this conversation with them and, you know, I'm just letting them know, like, listen, this is what you need to do with your life. And I'm, excuse me, because I'm just looking at my dog, but they take it the wrong way, you know what I'm saying? And they, they take it like, you know, to their feelings, but in the wrong type of way. So that's one thing that like really bothers me. So I'm kind of glad that we are speaking. I'm, I am, but I just hope that regardless of what I tell any of my children, I'm, I want them to know, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is for the best of you. This is for your future. This is, you know, we always try to instill the best in our kids. So I just always wish the best for them. And you know, at this point in my life, I'm not going to ever step back and step away, but I'm going to step back, you know what I'm saying? And allow you to grow up or grow as a person. So with that being said, thank you everyone who has left their comments and well wishes and just support. Huh? 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 What? Damn. In the comment section, what are you doing? And we're going to get on to this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about on this channel, you could always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. And if you would like to change the name of the people that you are referring to in this real talk, you can always let me know that. And if you don't, then you know what? 99.99999% of the time. I will change the names on my own. So let's get into this real talk. Okay. What are you doing? All right, you guys. So, hi, April. My name is Lily. Not really. It's a fake name. LOL. I'm 19 years old and I recently started watching your channel to learn how to style and take better care of my wigs. And I loved it. And I loved your personality. Anyways, now to the real talk. Me and my mom have had a weird relationship from the beginning. She would always favor or prefer my brothers, which she openly denies to my face and accuses me of lying or being jealous. She will also throw little backhanded compliments at me and my sister, which I feel as though affected my sister's self-esteem quite a lot and for a while affected mine too. But then I realized I'm too cute to care about what someone doesn't like about my body. Okay. That's right. That's what's up. That's the, that's the, that's the type of attitude we have to have. My sister has openly expressed this to her that her backhanded compliments like, oh, you look cute today. You could lose some weight, though. You look like you gained a few. Makes, makes her feel bad about herself, which she obviously didn't care about because she still does it. 
Now, I'm a very open, understanding, and kind young lady, which often people take advantage of. So I tried understanding from her point of view for a long time, which didn't work or added up to her behavior towards me and my older sister. There was always little weird, spiteful things she'd say or do to me, even when I was just a child, about like four to five years old. Like if my brother did something to warrant a spanking or something, they'd opt absolutely get in trouble for she'd either try to blame it on me or try to get me involved to get a punishment as well and would go as far as to lie to my father about it so he spanked me and not them she would seriously try to convince me i was in the wrong and that i did things that i didn't do but i am and was a very stubborn girl and refused to admit to something i didn't do which never actually worked and i got in trouble anyway my grandmother aka her mom would do this as well to me. Like I said, they favored the boys in my family, which is where I think she's gotten this behavior from. Now, in present time, I'm 19 and I still live with my mother and father and my two brothers. My older sister is a nurse and has a child and lives on her own. My mom is a stay-at-home mom and hasn't worked since I was five years old. My dad is the sole provider of the family and has basically always been, even though my mom has worked. I have been looking for a job for the longest time because I feel guilty not working at my age, at least for myself, or if not for me, to at least help my dad with some bills. My oldest brother is 23 years old, doesn't feel the same way as I do at all, not even remotely. He sits around all day, doesn't shower, talks to his friends all day and all night over Skype, eats up all the food in the house without consideration for anyone else and whenever he is asked to apply to jobs by my mother he either doesn't do it or gives an excuse why he won't which is new every month because he really doesn't feel as though he shouldn't have to work as it at, it's as if he has the mentality of a 12 year old but my mother allows this and lets him continue this bad behavior she will complain to me every now and then about him doing something inconsiderate like eating her food, even though she specifically told him not to, or eating my father's food, which she would then have to make up an excuse to my father about what happened to his food because my father doesn't play and will kick him out in a heartbeat if he actually knew his real behavior. So whenever she complains to me about him, I try to state my opinion on her enabling him to be this way and she attacks me saying I'm jealous and that I'm no better. So either vent this to my boyfriend, so I either vent this to my boyfriend about how I feel about the situation or I just keep my mouth shut and try to have respect for my mother. But then comes the situation where she openly disrespects me for either no reason or to cover for my brothers. A few months ago, I asked my mother if she could maybe help or give me some advice on finding a job. And she refused, saying, I wouldn't know what to do. You just have to do it yourself. So I said, okay, I guess that's understandable. For almost seven months, I made a resume, applied to jobs on multiple job searching websites by myself with no luck since I had absolutely no experience whatsoever. But eventually I started getting replies from companies asking me to come in for interviews, which I accepted or considered. One day I was telling my mom about the engagement of one of my friends and she suddenly interrupts me saying, I helped your brother apply for a job today. And I was taken back but, did, but decided to just answer with, oh, that's nice. And she immediately replied, he's doing better than you. And out of compulsion and shock, I replied, what? And she quickly skipped the subject and I reluctantly let it go. That absolutely hurt my pride, which drove me to work even harder to find a job that would suit my situation, which I did. And they would, and they called me for an interview and I was ecstatic. I immediately told my mom I had an interview. I needed to go for a nice job that paid well and a company that seemed very nice. She immediately applied, well, I don't know if your dad can take you. He has work. And I applied. I didn't even say which day the interview was. So how would you know that? Never mind, I'll ask him directly if he can take me, which he gladly said sure and was excited and happy for me. On the day of the interview, I was getting dressed while my mother was talking to me and I expressed how happy I am about the interview. And like I said, she would say really snide remarks to me for no reason. She said to me, so what? That doesn't make you special, just kidding. But I don't know anyone who jokes about something like that let alone with their kids, but all right. So I went to the interview and it seemed to go fine. And afterwards, my dad had a talk about the job and what the schedule would be if I got it and how he would prefer to 
prefer to me to go to school rather than to immediately jump into work. Which is, which I disagree because it hurt my pride to just not be working. If I work, I could do school part time if it was really that important to him that I'd go. After he dropped me off at home, I thanked him and went inside the house. I started talking to my mom about how the interview went, and she didn't really seem that interested, which was fine. I was still so happy about it, so I doubt I really cared. And it's about 12 p.m., and I see my oldest brother get out of bed and go to the living room to start his cycle of non-productiveness for the day. Next thing you know, my brother is sprinting back upstairs and literally jumps into his bed. And I'm super confused, and I hear my dad banging on the front door to be let in. Apparently... He hadn't left for work yet, and my brother was pretending to be asleep to avoid talking about a job with him, which I told my mother he was doing, but she ignored it and literally laughed it off. Anyway, sorry for this. This is long, but our relationship has been long and toxic. Just two months ago, I had horribly, I was horribly ill and couldn't keep down any food or drinks for days, and I was in severe pain. Was begging my mother to take me to the hospital because I felt something was absolutely wrong and she denied me and told me I was overreacting and that I must likely had a stomach flu, which I knew wasn't true. For days, I could barely day lay down without being in immense amounts of pain or go in in 10 minutes without puking up yellow or black bile. It got to the point where I was on the floor in agony and begging someone to take me to the hospital. But my mother would convince my father and anyone else that it was just a bad stomach flu and I didn't need to go. My mom then went to church, leaving me in severe pain. And my dad, who was believing my mom that it was just a stomach flu, woke up to see me on the living room floor crying in intense pain and immediately called my mother to tell her. My mom grew angry and said I was just trying to gain attention and that I just needed to drink hot tea because I had a stomach flu. So I did that and I threw it up immediately. And my father told her this and she selfishly told him to wait until she got out of church so we could go to the hospital together, which was another hour. And when she arrived home, she tried to convince my father not to take me again, which he refused to listen to and just decided to take me. My mother tagged along to try to make it seem like she was being supportive, which she wasn't, and she was obviously very irritated that he was taking me. When we got to the emergency room, the nurses immediately admitted me and began doing numerous tests on me, including an ultrasound. The whole time the nurse was doing the ultrasound, she didn't say anything. She suddenly got up and called who I assume is a doctor to tell them what's going on with me. Immediately, I was visited by two surgeons telling me I needed to have emergency gallbladder removal surgery due to a very infected gallbladder filled with gallstones and had me pushed back to the hospital room. When I arrived, my mother was acting obviously fake, fake concerned, but I didn't care because I was still in so much pain. Immediately when the nurses told me I'd be staying a few days in the hospital, she kept mentioning, oh, I'm so tired. This has been a long time. I am exhausted. Mind you, we got to the hospital at 5. It was only 9 p.m. And she immediately told my dad to take her home and that she'd see me tomorrow, whenever. So I was like, okay, fine, since I was just over her behavior and over this pain. Likely she didn't even have the decency to wait until they at least gave me my pain meds to make sure I'm okay. For the next few days, I was in the hospital awaiting my surgery. Since they couldn't immediately work on me since I had such a bad infection, she did this every single day. She kept complaining about how tired she was and how exhausting this is for her and saying how she wants to go home and lay in her bed. And every day I said, okay, fine, go, because I was still in pain, even with the pain medication and did not feel like dealing with her or her manipulative behavior. On a particular bad night, I was in an immense amount of pain and had to do everything myself because my mother didn't want to stay and my father had to work and my siblings just didn't come. After work, my father came to check on me and I immediately broke down in tears from relief and frustration from everything and my father called my mother yelling at her for being so inconsiderate. Fast forward a week later, I'm recovering from my surgery. I'm home. Mom is still complaining about how exhausted she is, but my surgery went extremely well and I'm just healing now. My oldest brother likes to do things for attention and he starts saying, my side hurts. I'm having pain. Like how was I previously? And my mom immediately makes my father take him to the hospital. Like immediately. I was in such a disbelief beyond words. And obviously when they got back from the hospital, absolutely nothing was wrong with the kid. He was just doing it for the attention. 
when I brought up the fact that I literally was dying and begging to be taken to the hospital and you refused to let me go. But all he had to do was ask and he got whisked away to the hospital. She said it was different. And he said that he was in pain. I let it go, which took so much strength to do that because I just felt so hurt by that because it makes it seem like I'm so kind of, I'm like, I'm some kind of animal to her or something. Now things have been tense because I just got the clear to start working from, start working again after my surge for my surgeon. My mother wants to move and she's been hinting and she doesn't want me to move with them. Basically, this is my situation right now. And I just needed to know that I'm not being a bratty child here and that I'm not in the wrong because I'm honestly trying my hardest. Never do I give my parents trouble and I try to help as much as I can around the house. Thanks for taking the time to read all of this mess. It's a lot and I know, and I'm so sorry. Um, well, Lily, my mouth to get a little dry, but we already know that as much as I be complaining, my mouth will always begin dry. So you guys heard it and I'm, I hope you guys can remember a, a lot of it because it was pretty long. So basically we got Lily here who's 19 years old. She lived with her mother and her father. She got her eldest brother who's 23 years old. She got her older sister that doesn't live in the home anymore. You know what I'm saying? So she's 19 and her brother's 23 years old and he don't have no job. He don't do shit. She didn't even say that he'd go to school or nothing. I did not hear her say in that email that that nigga go to school. All he do basically is sit there, be on Skype. Um, does he smoke weed all day? Probably not. Um, Bottom line, a nigga don't do shit. So, but he's always making these excuses about why he can't find a job or why he won't find a job every month. You know what I'm saying? And the mother, who is an at-home mom, seems like she's just. To me, it seems like her mom's head is up in space. Okay, Scotty got her beam the fuck up. Now, for one, we are treat these kids equal. Like every kid is treated equal. Okay, I, I say to my I say to my kids all the time, I love you all the same, and you know I have her well. You treat one this way, you treat the other differently. I cannot treat you who is 11 years old like that one who is 23 or 26 or 27. You guys all get treated differently because you all have a different personality, but you all get treated the same as well, meaning you all have the same rules. You have all the same standards. You know what I'm saying? I was I expect you all to have respect for those outside of this home as well as in this home. You know what I'm saying? You're all expected to work and go to school and do what you're supposed to do in life. But yes, every one of them has a different personality. But that doesn't mean that one can have a job and the other one can't if they're of legal age to have a job. You know what I'm saying? So I don't ex I, I do treat them that way differently. Sorry about that. Tinky wanted me to put um Netflix back on for him. So, you know, I do treat them that in that same way, but you cannot let one do, you know what I'm saying? You cannot favor one. This girl, Lily, laying here damn near dying on the floor in pain, and no one wants to take her to the hospital. The father seemed like he was down with it in the beginning, but the mother is just trying to like freaking black, not even blackmail him, but brainwash him and convince him that the girl is not sick she's just doing this for attention but meanwhile you got the 23 year old son who's just getting up in the afternoons eating up all the goddamn food in the house eating up all the um the hogs ma eating up all the pigs feet eating up all the collard greens lily wants some of that too she wants some of them pigs feet she wants some of those hogs ma. you know what i'm saying but we got him that's not doing shit and we got this girl who's going to school and trying to find a job and she in pain. Now, let me tell you something. And when you 19 years old, sweetheart, I would have called the damn ambulance. I would have called 911 and had them send me an ambulance. I would not wait around with, for anyone to take me to the hospital and fool with my health, okay? That's the next time. Next time you get sick like that and don't nobody want to take you to the hospital, sweetheart, call the ambulance. They just going to have to deal with that shit later. Now, here it is. Good thing that your father did stop listening to your mother and went and took you to the hospital. Here's the thing. We got to love our parents regardless. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. But, you know, as kids, you know what I'm saying? Parents are not always perfect. I'm a parent. My mom is a parent. Like, you know what I'm saying? My mom wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect. But we all have to respect them. However, you know what I'm saying? It would be nice to be respected in return. You know what I'm saying? It would be nice to be respected in return. Meaning, 
parents respect your kids and kids respect your parents. Let's all be respectable. But here she has this mom of hers who is always belittling her, you know, snide remarks, you know, she say a little smart shit. After a while, that shit gets to be real fucking annoying, okay? And not only annoying, but you start to feel like, oh, do you like even like like me? How do you feel about me as a child? You know what I'm saying? Or do we have something like that's going on? You know, you guys know that, you know, I have shared with you many different, you know, situations. Like, you know, I have told you like a lot of my life stories, not even my life stories, but you know, certain things that happened to me in life. And you guys know that me and my mom used to not get along that great. I mean, there was been many times when we, you know, had disagreements with one another and I have stopped speaking to her or she has stopped speaking to me for like, you know, a couple months, a few months, whatever. But, you know, I, I never forget. I had this long conversation with her and this probably was like six years ago because I was living in Schenectady, New York still at the time. And she came to visit and I was just basically telling her that, you know, I don't remember how the conversation started off, but I just remember just telling her that, that things that she used to say to me as like a young adult, like 18, 16, 15, you know, those things did stick with me and those did those things did bother me, you know, saying things like she she looks better than me or how I look ugly or I'm fat or I'm this, you know what I'm saying? Those things did bother me a lot. And it's not cool when you say certain things like that to your kids regardless of how you feel or if you're upset with them because even though you say things out of anger, that shit could still really kind of like brainwash your kid if you're saying it repetitively over and over and over again. You're telling them these things. And so like with her mom, Lily's mom, she's telling her little snide remarks about how, you know, oh, what makes you so special? You know, saying things like that. Oh, your brother got a job. So she's more or less like acknowledging the fact that Lily's brother, let's just call him Deadbeat, has a job, has went and put an application in. Or excuse me, she helped her deadbeat son fill out an application while Lily's over here doing them all on her own. You know what I'm saying? So she's acknowledging the fact that she's helped her son do these applications. And she's kind of like tearing her, this girl's self-esteem down in my eyes. Let me tell you something. If your mom wants to move, because she did say her mother wants to move. If your mom wants to move, that's great. That's good on her. However, if she doesn't want you to move with her, sweetheart, don't do yourself. And if, let me say, don't stress yourself the fuck out over it. You know what I'm saying she's helping you out. She's doing you a favor. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, it's hard out there in the world. It is definitely hard. It's a struggle, especially for those like yourself, Lily, who are young. You know what I'm saying? You're still a teenager who are, you know what I'm saying? You're going to school and you're trying to find a job. So you are going to struggle. You are definitely going to struggle on your own. And it's probably easier for you to live at home and be around your parents. But it's maybe it's not mentally easier, okay, to live at home. If you... If you're finding out that your mom doesn't want you to move with her, is it that your mom is telling you that? Let me tell you. If your mother, in fact, said, if you if you were told by your mom that she doesn't want you to move with her, I would like for you to ask her why. You need to really have a conversation with your mother and do that same thing that I did with my mom is let her know that these things bothered me and made me feel this type of way regardless if your mother takes it in and listens to it or not let that shit get off your chest and let her know if she don't suck it in and soak it in her brain today tomorrow next month next year i guarantee you she will one day and i say one day because listen she in her little stubborn state right now and she may not feel like whatever she's saying to you bothers you like that because you still you still there you still converse with her you know what i'm saying you still do things with her you know what i'm saying now, she may not think that that shit bother you by her little snide remarks. Even if you're telling her in like an argumentative manner, she definitely might not think that those things bother her, bother you. However, this is what I need you to do for me and for yourself. Regardless if you don't see the payoff immediately, I still need you to do this. When you have the time, and when I say when you have the time, meaning you could have all the time in the world, you could be sitting there not doing nothing today or tomorrow, but when I say when you have the time, meaning when you are in the mental positive state, like you ain't got nothing bothering you. Your mother did not just irritate you yesterday or today or five minutes ago or a couple of days ago. You know what I'm saying? If it's still not festering in you, then you have the time. If you got some shit inside that's festering in you, which I'm pretty sure you do because you wouldn't be having this talk with her right now. But 
if it is not something that is angering and festering and firing up inside you, then that's when you have the time to have a conversation with her. Now, make sure she's in her right mind because we don't want to hear about, oh, you don't want to hear about, oh, she exhausted. She just want to go lay in her bed. You don't want to hear none of that shit. So sometimes it's best to talk to somebody early in the daytime, early in the day, because if you speak with someone that's later on in the day, like in the evening, they done had all the shit that was earlier in the day go on. You don't know that shit that went earlier on in the day might have fucked with them mentally that even by that evening. And so they might not be in their right state of mind. So I would just say, you know, like mid afternoon, mid morning, mid morning is when the best time if you around her is the best time to go and approach her. If you ain't festering inside and she seemed like she all right, I would definitely have a sit down with her and let her know, listen, these are the things that you have done that have make me feel like you really are more favorited, favoriting my brothers and that the love and the respect that you, that I have for you is not there towards me. Let her know what's bothering you. You know what I'm saying? And if she did tell you herself out of her own mouth that she doesn't want you to move with her, you need to ask her, what are her reasons for her not wanting you to move with them and choosing your brother? You want to know these reasons. And if she tell you her reasons, and if that's is true, that she did say this out of her own mouth, then you know what? That's fine. You gonna be okay, and when I say you gonna be okay, cause shit like this always make us stronger. You know, it make us a stronger individual. And even though that shit might be coming from your own biological parent, that shit might fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Inside, mentally, and heartfully, that shit might fuck with you. It's still gonna make you a stronger person, whether you think so or not. It's still gonna make you a stronger person in life. You know what I'm saying? So. If that's how she feel and she really tell you, yeah, I don't want you to be moving with us, et cetera, et cetera, and reasons why, sweetheart, take that shit in like a grain of salt and move forward. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to move forward with her, but move forward. Regardless if you're struggling or not, move forward and don't never let that shit hinder you. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times what happens in life, people use like certain things as an excuse to hinder them and not get ahead. You know what I'm saying? I understand that some people might have been, you know what I'm saying, abused as a kid or, you know what I'm saying, just, you know, went through a struggle, been in foster care as a kid. I understand this. We None of us have the best in life. You know what I'm saying? And when I say the best in life, meaning none of us have 100% drama-free in our lives, regardless of from the day we were born to the day we die. Everybody has an issue in life. Understand me? Everybody has an issue in life. So I feel like, you know, I understand that people have an issue in life, but we cannot let it dictate our entire lives. You know, I, I see these shows that people go on and it could be like in their forties and you know what? I've seen a lot of them where these girls or these 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 grown up, these grown women, these grown adults, like my age, go on these talk shows or whatever and state, well, you know, my father was my father left me when I was two. I haven't seen my father since I was two. Growing up without a father was hard. And that's why I I like to be with older men who abuse me and treat me, you know what I'm saying? Because that makes it feel like it's love. You, you never hear anything like that? Because I've heard several cases like that, several cases like that. And it's like, okay, first of all, I'm not going to allow that shit that my dad did, like um, if I'm 40, 38 years ago, affect my life today. I'm not going to allow that to allow me to be some type of woman that I'm going to just be with older men who are like a daddy to me. I just don't like to see people that have had a situation in life, let it deter them and stagnate them and dictate the rest of their life. Just because you've had negative that's in your life in the beginning, early stages of life or whatever, don't mean that you've got to have negative throughout your life for the rest of your life. You have to use that negative shit to turn it into a positive shit. And some people just aren't able to allow that within themselves. Some people are not able to allow that to grow. Like my negative shit that I've had in my life, I have had a, I have allowed that to allow me to grow. You know what I'm saying? It it teaches me. It has taught me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, this person did this to you. And how I may have handled it is I might have gotten irate. I might have got real out of my character. I might have acted a fool. 
And I have looked at those situations and I have sat back and said, you know what, April, you got real loud and indignant out in the street. You got real loud out in the street and everybody was watching you and looking at you. Now you think back and I'm just using that as a prime example. I'm not saying I did. And you think back like, damn, that was real stupid of me. I'm not going to do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'll never do that again. So it has allowed me to you know what I'm saying, mature and better myself. So I just feel like let's take these situations that we have had in the past and turn them into a positive, you know what I'm saying, situation. You always got to learn and grow from some shit. And it, it sucks when you have a parent, either either way, you if you're living with both parents or one, either parent, doesn't matter. When you have a parent that really is not like vested in you, like, I'm going to say 95, 90%. I'm just going to give them that. I'm going to be decent and say 90%. Because, you know, sometimes we as parents get really busy, so we can't give our all attention, but we are still there. And it sucks when you have a parent that really just don't give a fuck about you, okay, who more or less favors one over the other. That's really hurtful as a kid because then, you you know, you start feeling some type of way. And a lot of times people don't say anything about the shit that bothers them. Lily ain't saying shit to her mom about it. And she might have in an argue way, in an argumentative way, but she really need to sit down and have this long talk with her. And I tell you, I tell you what, I have told my mom many times, many times that I don't like the shit that she has said to me. You know what I'm saying? And I might've said it. I didn't say it in a decent way. When I say in a decent way, meaning we having a regular conversation. The other ways that I have said it to her is like going off on her because she's hurt my feelings. So of course she's not going to listen to me if I'm going off on her because you just hurt my feelings. So now I'm, I'm going off on you. Um, of course she's not going to listen to me. All she's going to worry about is, dang, she yelled at me. She just, I'm her mother. How did she talk to me? So all she worried about is her feelings. She's not really even concerned about anything that I just said to her, even though I was voicing my opinion, yelling, and all the things that I said to her, were correct, like you shouldn't have called me no damn whore, or you shouldn't have said you look better than me. You know, even though everything that I was spewing to her in my loud, overtoned voice was truth, she really wasn't hearing it because I'm yelling and I'm out of character, and all she's concerned about is herself. So, this is what I'm saying. Lily might have said that to her mom on numerous occasions, but she might have been coming at her on some rah rah shit, or they might have just had a comment, you know, they might have had a disagreement. Regardless, this is the time when you sit her down and you let her know, like, listen, this is how you made me feel. This is what you did to me. This is whatever you are feeling within yourself. You need to sit there and listen. You need to sit there and explain that to her. Okay. And if she takes it in today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, it don't matter when she take it in, she going to take it in. And I'll tell you why she going to take it in because she gonna, if she don't take it in today or tomorrow, that means she's still going to be doing the same shit that she has been doing to you for all this time. If she don't take it in until next year, that means a whole year has gone by and she has still been doing the same shit to you that she has been doing to you, which you have already talked to her about. And since she has not changed within that year, you yourself, Lily, have pushed yourself away from her and have distanced yourself. And over time, she has waited two, three, four years, and she's still acting this way towards you. And you are so distanced from her that she don't need binoculars just to get close to you. And after a while, she is going to realize, damn, why is she this way? And that's when it's going to sink the fuck in. You know what I'm saying? So it's a pattern, and it's it's like it, it's a pattern. It's not a pattern that anybody can stop except for her. The longer she treats you like this, the, the more further away you are going to get to her. And like I said, regardless if you tell her today and she takes it in today, tomorrow, next week, next year, five, ten years from now, she's going to take it in. And she might be slow rolling on taking it in, but she's going to take it in eventually because what's going to happen is the outcome is going to be your distance from her. And then she's finally realized and finally gets the shit like, you know what, I haven't been treating her right. And she did tell me this. Straight up. You know, these are our parents. And like I said, ain't nobody better than nobody. Ain't nobody the best parent in the world. Don't go around judging others. Yeah, we we judge others. When I say we don't, when I say don't go around judging others means 
listen, don't sit there and say, oh, well, I'm better than you because I do this. Or he's smarter than me. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, he's smarter than you because he's Microsoft. And he's smarter than you because he's Ford. And that don't mean, just because somebody is good at one thing does not mean that they're smarter than you or they're better than you. This is just type for a prime example. Um, we going to use the Amazon guy. <laughs> now, yes, that motherfucker, the Amazon guy, he is worth $137 billion. And he is in the process of being divorced. Okay? That motherfucker is smart. He's smart how he started his shit off. But can you put him and me in a room? And someone would definitely say, oh, well, he's smarter than April because... He got Amazon. Just because he's got Amazon does not make him smarter than me. He knows something that I don't know. Okay. I know some things that this nigga don't know. Like he don't, you couldn't sit me down and have me run Amazon. Okay. Cause I would fuck Amazon up, but you couldn't sit him down and give him a, stock, a wig head and some hair and have him make a wig either. So just because one person is good at something, are better at something than another person is, do not make them better than the rest of the world. You just know something that I don't know, but I guarantee you I know something that you don't know. So when I say don't go judging people, don't sit there and really analyze the person and say, oh yeah, well he's better than you or I'm better than you because I could do this or I'm better than you because you ain't do shit, you ain't achieved nothing in life, you sitting at home. Ain't nobody better than nobody. This is towards like Lily's mom. She feel like, oh, her son is better or what makes her so special. Nobody is more special than the next. Nobody is more better than the next. We all have our own characteristics. We all have our own personalities. I do one thing one way. You do one thing another way. You don't know how to make a wig and I don't know how to change a tire. Okay? Nobody is better. Don't go judging people. Don't sit there and just like analyze the person to where you feel like, oh, I'm better than this person. We are all equal in this world. Yeah, we do go around judging people. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll be the first. Yeah, I go around and I see, I, I see a girl. I see girls and I see girls with the. Hmm. I see girls with the most ratchetest wigs on, okay, or the most raggediest wigs on, or the wigs that look like they have been down the alley, okay, alley wigs. We're going to call those alley wigs, okay? I have seen those, or like, girl, why would you come out the house looking like that? You, you, don't, you didn't want to fix up the hairline? I see that. And I, I talk about the shit, but I'm not going to judge them as a person because behind their fucking raggedy ass lace wig or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not going to judge them as a person and say, look at her, she's dirty, or look at her, she's a hoe, or she's a bum bitch, because her wig is like that. No, I'm going to just say her wig is busted. And that's that. So, but some people judge people so far as to say what they're really like. Oh, you know, you look at their appearance, you might see that, oh, she drives a raggedy ass car. Her shit is all raggedy and shit. She be wearing the same jeans and shit. Oh, this bitch is broke and she's a bum. Meanwhile, this bitch is, is driving home to this nice big ass house that she done paid for and she got it all nicely done inside. New appliances, new everything. Because what? She driving that raggedy ass car and you see her wearing the same shit. So she's not a bum bitch. She's actually, you know what I'm saying? Well to do. But we didn't judge that person. Let's not judge people like that. Let's not, let's not just, let's not go to that extent. But also, when you got kids, let's not favor one another. Each one of them is different. I say this all the time about my kids. I have five kids and every last one of the motherfuckers have a different personality. If they was all the same, I would probably go insane, okay? I would not want them all to be the same because they might all be just bad motherfuckers. OK, if they were all like geniuses, they might be too many fucking geniuses in one household that it would drive me crazy. You know what I'm saying? You don't want all these motherfuckers with these big ass brains and genius together because that would make conflict because one would think that they were smarter than the other. You know what I'm saying? Because they are already a genius. You feel me? So when we have kids, multiple plural kids they all have different attitudes. They all got different personalities. They are not the same human beings. You have to realize, like, 
we're going to treat you the same as in we love you all the same, but we cannot treat you all the same personality wise because you all are different. And I say this all the time to my kids. I don't love any one of you guys less or more. You may find that I might yell at you more than I yell at you because you are the one that's always out of hand while you're the one that's always quiet. So I can't, you know what I'm saying? It depends on the kid, but we cannot favor them. And if you got a lazy one in the house and you got one that does something all the time, trust and believe me. Trust me. They will clash like a motherfucker. Okay. Prime example. We got my daughter, Nay, who's 16 and she washes the dishes and she helps me keep the kitchen clean and stuff. Even if she washes the dishes and that's her chore and I pay her for that, doesn't mean that everybody else in the household could just like leave the kitchen dirty and just pile dishes up. That doesn't mean that shit. That's just because I, to, I, I pay her to do that. Doesn't mean that shit. You know what I'm saying? And so she gets tired of that shit because that's what the shit has been going on. And I've said something to her about it. And she has said something to me about it because we don't like it. And we have said stuff to the other people in this home. Well, the other day she put up a sign on the refrigerator, you know what I'm saying, about keeping the kitchen clean and stuff. And it was a very nice sign. Then she said stuff about the dishes. Don't be putting all these dishes in the sink, bringing them out your rooms. We already know you're not supposed to even have dishes in there. Then, what does she say? She gets into this argument with, who else? Tati, about the dishes. Like, you know, back and forth. So, you got one that always do something, that always is doing something, and then you got the other that don't. So, it's like, okay, after a while, the one who always does is really over the top now. And she's going to go after the one that doesn't. And what do I have to do? I have to step in. So when you got one doing one thing, make the other do something. Even if it's a little kid, like a four-year-old, have them clean up after themselves or just find them something to do because they have to be responsible. And it sucks that Lily goes to school and tries to find a job while she got her brother, you know what I'm saying? living there and not doing nothing, not doing nothing all this time. That's all negative and toxic. And I'm going to tell you what, me personally, I would really try to find like a roommate. And when I say try to find a roommate, sweetheart, I don't mean go on Craigslist and post an article or an advertisement for one, okay, or, or Facebook. Find your friend, one of your friends that you already are um, in touch with, that you already know, and see if you and one of your friends can share an apartment together. Maybe they live on their own already and they kind of like, you know what I'm saying, struggling with the bills. Maybe you guys can move in together or maybe, you know what I'm saying, mention something, suggest some ideas which you and your friends can move in together because everybody wants to get out of their parents' house. But sometimes at that age, not everybody can do that on their own because it's a, it's a struggle. But when you have enough girls, like maybe two or three, then you guys can combine income together and, you know, support one another. That way you allows you to get out of your parents' house. But as long as you stay there and not say anything, it's going to be very toxic. It's going to be very uncomfortable. And it's going to make the learning situation for yourself a lot harder. So I would definitely have a sit down with her. But I would also think about and weigh in, like, is it time for me to move out on my own? So that way I could just focus better on school and just be in a more healthy environment. But as long as you don't say anything, then nothing is going to change. And I guarantee you it might not change today, sweetheart but it will change eventually, okay? Because she's going to see the distance in between you guys. So you guys, on that note, I am going to go. It is Real Talk Wednesday. I love you guys. I'm going to go. I got to get to the post office as well as to the weight doctor. A girl slim. Okay, listen, bitch. My waist has gotten a little bit more slimmer since my surgery. So I am really happy about that. But you know what I'm saying? It has been a work in progress, so I'm super happy about that. Yes, hunties, yes. Um, and I, I think that was about it. I don't really, mm-hmm, yeah. I will see you guys soon. So make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. I love you guys, and I will see you guys in another soon-to-come video.